Yeah, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy B again with another informative video. Uh, today on this video, uh, we'll be discussing the works of a refugium and the benefits of having a refugium running on your tank. Everybody's doing good here. And I'm going to show you this uh, oregonite. And then I'll get into that later. But uh, see, it's nice and white and looks just like it was when I first put it in here. Alright. Alright. Refugiums are basically relatively new to uh, the hobby. If we look at the hobby as a whole, refugiums are basically the newest form of filtration to uh, reef tanks or fowler tanks for that matter. And the refugium functions at full capacity when you have your deep sand bed over four inches. You have uh, good, good quality live rock. Doesn't have to be the purple stuff. And an appropriate size of catamorpha. Now at first I, I had a piece of live rock and a softball sized piece of catamorpha. Now the refugium, the deep sand bed works in the refugium. You have uh, two different types of bacteria that work here. And also you have little critters, little pods, different types of little pods. And the first couple of inches of the sand bed have what's called anaerobic bacteria. No, not anaerobic, aerobic bacteria, my bad. The anaerobics are a couple of more inches down, but the aerobic bacteria is high oxygen bacteria. And within these high oxygen bacteria, this is where the critters hang out at and consume the nutrients in your tank and release it as a least harmful uh, chemical, nitrite. Within the lower couple of inches of the sand bed are the anaerobic bacteria that work in conjunction with the aerobic. And then we all know what the live rock does. The live rock supports your biological filtration and feeds your tank with the necessary positive bacteria. The catamorpha is the algae of uh, choice for me because uh, in the early uh, uh, days of uh, the refusion when they first start coming out, you know, you had a lot of trial and error going on. Different algaes were being used and uh, a couple of disasters occur with uh, different people as they're uh, trying to you know, find the proper algae to put into a refugium. Well, today, now, we know it's uh, the catamorpha. The catamorpha, because it will grow and grow and grow, and you don't have to maintain it and clip it back. Like the other algaes, they'll go asexual on you and make your protein skimmer go crazy, uh, cloud uh, the water up in your tank. And some of these, once they go asexual, the byproduct of that is toxic to uh, fish. All right. Now, the benefits. Oh, first, let me tell you the story. Uh, about four weeks ago, uh, I'm feeding my corals uh, zooplankton. And uh, after I fed them the zooplankton, uh, I noticed a severe spike in nitrate and also a day after that very ugly brown diatom blooms all over my uh, my oregonite was uh, unhappy about it needless to say uh, so w what happened is uh, I had to had to step my game up a little bit 
so what I've done, I added uh, 15 more pounds of live rock to my refugium and increased the softball size and purchased a football size piece of catamorpha. Within 48 hours of introducing the 15 pounds of live rock and the catamorpha into the system, uh, the nitrate levels that were in my tank went from 30 all the way back down to 5. And I haven't tested it since then, but it's probably now at zero. And I say that because, uh, you know, if you remember, I had an earlier video of this protein skimmer. Uh, and the protein skimmer in that video was working very hard. Well, the protein skimmer is tuned in, dialed in just right, and it's not working hard at all because of this biological filtration right here. This natural, natural filtration. And it does work. And it's just a, it's just a good way to filter your aquarium water. It's 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 very close to what nature does. Very close. I mean, it's right there to you know, right there on the same level as to how Mother Nature does it. Also, uh, there are other benefits of having a uh, refugium on uh, your tank, and that is it puts trace elements back into your water constantly, and also helps regulate your your pH in your aquarium. I, was, I had pH problems in uh, the past before I did this and it did stabilize it. It, it stabilized it. Now uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to see if you can see it, I'm going to allow this catamorpha to grow the full length of the refugium and totally cover the live rock. And then once this has occurred I will uh, trim it back to about this size and let the process uh, occur again. Now, the, the whole concept behind this glob of algae here, this catamorpha, is that when you have nutrients in your water, we know the nutrients, they uh, raise your ammonia, pneumonia causes the nitrate, and this catamorpha feeds off of the nutrients and the nitrate. What it's really doing, since it's this big glob of algae down here in the refugium and the water in my aquarium is passing through here, it's actually starving the algae that would try to exist in the main display tank because it's getting a, a nice constant flow of water, proper lighting and it's basically taking the food from the algae that would try to grow in the main tank and that's what it's doing because I've seen a significant size change in well now uh, four days it's grown also uh, concerning much light you should give your uh, refugium there are two schools of thought uh, the first school of thought says keep your lights on 24-7 and just allow the catamorpha to continually grow. The uh, second school of thought is try to mimic Mother Nature best you can. Well, I'm, I'm with the second school of thought. Uh, mine runs on a reverse cycle from my uh, display tank. When the lights on, my display tank are on, these lights are off, and vice versa. And what this does, it gives you a it gives you the ability to control your pH a lot better and also it oxygenates the water. Now this works. This works. If you don't have one, if you're using bio balls and that's working for you well, it's, it's preference. Uh, you're not doing anything wrong because systems are set up successfully in many ways. But uh, this has really blown my mind within the last couple of days. It is uh, just doing uh, so good, so well. And it, it even appears when I look at my tank that the water, just the overall appearance of the tank looks better uh, 
Now, I don't know if that's just me knowing that the tank is healthier itself or if it actually is doing something. But, uh, I mean, I, I can notice a significant difference as far as the testing is concerned. Yeah, this sand bed on mine isn't fully matured yet because uh, I don't see any little uh, gas pockets or little critters yet, but when I bought this, it came with all kind of pods and uh, all kinds, like three different types of starfish, snails, and all kind of things going on here. So I'm going to give it a little time, and I'm quite sure this thing's going to be teeming with life if that brittle starter and eat most of them up. And what I'll do is I'll come over here and I'll remove this sponge from my return pump, and hopefully uh, a lot of the pods that exist here they'll they'll go over the waterfall here and make their way over here to the uh, return pump and give my give my fish a little something to nibble on in between feedings. Yep, yep, yep. That's what I'm going to do right there. Also, I uh, want to say something else about uh, bad habits that we may have uh, when we are uh, you know take care of our tank. Proper maintenance is something that's it's, it's essential. It has to be done. Water changes, testing. It's something that's just going to have to be done. And uh, also, um, something that I wasn't doing at first, but I started since I had this diatom algae uh, breakout. Uh, when you add these uh, frozen foods to your, uh, your system, you want to put them in a net and run hot water over them and thaw them that way. So all of that nutrients, that liquid that would come from the thawing process isn't introduced into your tank because that's not going to be eaten or cleanup crew's not going to be able to get to it. No fish is going to get it. It's, gonna, it's just going to fuel algae in your tank. And uh, I don't know, some people feed every day. Some people feed twice a day. I feed every other day. My thinking is uh, they're not going to die, and to me it seems like it has, it, it has them more lively. They forage around and pick and nibble. So I feed every other day. I introduce less nutrients into the water when I feed every other day. All right, you two. It's your boy B, and I hope this video was uh, helpful to you. Or you heard something that you can apply and use that will help you out if you're having uh, certain problems like I had a couple of weeks ago. But uh, like I said, as you can see, introducing more live rock and more catamorpha uh, fixed the problem, and it fixed it perfectly. Things are back to normal now. And you know most problems that occur in our tanks, they're they're us that cause them. All right, this your boy B, and I'll holler at you again. Send you hit you off with another video. Hope you guys are doing well, and your aquariums and uh, reef tanks are doing well also. All right, peace.